Hello there. School Dude Clem here, as a lot of you think I say. Actually, it's Cool Dude Clem, but you might have noticed something different about me today. I'm wearing a hat. But more importantly than that, I don't even sound like me right now. Yep, I found out how to change my voice with software, and later I'm going to tell you how I did it. A lot of you think I sound like a kid, so I thought I'd really sound like a kid. In fact, some of you think I sound like a little six-year-old, so I... Uh... Now I really do sound like a little six-year-old. Don't I found adorable right now? Don't you... Oh, God. I just realized how cringy this is going to sound. Especially when you hear it in my real voice. Which I'm not going to let you hear. Anyway, let's try another voice. Let's try the greatest narrator in the entire world. Stanley looked around. He just didn't know what to do. He wanted to see his boss and ask for a raise, but he just couldn't face the possibility of being fired for that. So instead, he went into the broom closet and cowered there. Or, uh, what about this one? My name is Lisa Simpson. Oh, Clem, I love you so much. I don't care about Nelson or Millhouse. It's you I love. Marry me, Clem. Marry me. Okay, that's going to be already cringy. I can even do this with synthesized voices. Right now I'm using the Speakonia Adult Male 1 voice. And this, well, this is complete with the really shrill S that the Speakonia Adult Male 1 voice says, you know. This is a test for Speakonia. I have been on too much bush. Or, uh, what about Microsoft Sam? My name is Microsoft Sam. I am dumb because I cannot say crotch or soy. Oh, wait. I can say these words. And I can talk like a normal person. I don't have to go swa 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 anymore. Um, actually, I think this would sound better if I talked in an American accent, so... This is Microsoft Sam, and, um, oh wait, this is more cowboy. Um, I'm a trash something. This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and I'm here to tell you, don't buy a cross, leave their junk. And, anyway, yeah, so I bet you never heard Microsoft Sam sound like this before. Speaking of Sam... I can even talk in the Commodore 64 Sam voice. Yeah, I even did a voice of, uh, well, the uh, uh, Commodore 64 Sam voice. So, if you thought this voice was flexible before, well, now you've heard it like you've never heard it before. And finally, um, this voice here was shown based on the Amstra CDC speech voice. I sit in here, this one didn't come out too well. In fact, I don't even... I don't even think you can understand the word of what I'm saying right now. So... Um, I'll still back to my normal voice. For some of you who are humorous, this is handed more money than... So... Now you know how well it works. Let's see how I did it. So, as you may or may not have guessed, these are AI voices that I can control with my own voice. All I need to do is record myself, then load that recording into the software, pick a voice I want to use, the computer does some magic voodoo wizardry, and out comes what I just said, but with the voice I picked. So I'm going to take you through all the steps needed to do this. Before we start though, you're gonna need a somewhat decent graphics card. And why? Well, like most AI stuff, a GPU is just better at doing all the complicated mathulations and shifting data around than a CPU is. Don't ask me why, it just is. So first off, we're going to need to install two programs. RVC Beta, which actually makes the voices and can do some other stuff too that we won't get into right now. And RVC GUI, which can turn your voice into whatever voices you've made or downloaded. Now. These are a bit picky about where you put them. 
if this space is anywhere in the file path, it's not going to work because it's written in Python, and Python doesn't like that. So what I'm going to do is create a folder in the root directory of my secondary hard drive, and I'm going to put them in there. And look at that. I'm already making that mistake that I just told you not to do. So we're going to quote unquote install RVC beta first. Now, you're going to need 7-zip for this, but don't worry, this is all free by the way. So I'll just double click on the zip file, drag the folder into the folder I just created. And now we're ready to run it. But before we do that, let's just install the other program. And for this, we'll just do the same as we did for RVC Beta. Now that's done, we're ready to roll. Now I have a voice clip prepared, all ready to train a model on, which is right here. It's the Tails and Sonic Pals Tails voice, because I'm cringe. Hey there, inventors, it's Tails here. And today, we're going to be exploring the amazing Google. Let's see what cringy things I can find about myself. So, I'm going to go into the RVC beta folder and create a new folder in there. And I'll just call it, um, I'll just call it input. You can call it whatever you like, but that's what I'm calling it. Now take Elaine's Tails voice and drop it in there. You're going to want the voice clips to be between 9 and 10 minutes. That's enough data to train the model. And any longer than that, it's just going to take forever and it's not really going to sound much better. Also, you're going to need to get the cleanest possible audio you can. For your background music, background noise, reverb and other stuff like that. I've managed to remove the background music from these voice clips, so it's all ready to go. So it's finally time to run this thing and train a voice model. This takes a while to load, so just be patient. Maybe read the whole of War and Peace, or go on vacation. Eventually the GUI should come up in a web browser, and I use Firefox because I'm a furry. Except I have no intention of parading around in a fursuit. Any day now, sometime this century, would be nice. Anyway, one eternity later, and you should see this. Now, we need to go into train, which is where we can actually train a model. So the first thing to do is we're going to give this a name. I'm just going to call it TASP. I'm sure you can guess what that's short for. We can leave the other stuff as it is, but I'm going to select version 2 because that's better. Next, we need the folder path of where the voice recording is. That's simple enough. Just open the folder that has the voice recording. Click on the address bar. And this will show the file path of the folder. And it should already be highlighted. So we can just copy that with Control c Paste that into step 2a. No need to change anything else. And now we click that orange button. So while that's going on, I'm going to check the command prompt, which is where all this stuff is actually going on, so I can monitor it and see when it's done. And done. So when that's done, we go to step 2b, and all you need to do here is click the big orange feature extraction button. Again, no need to change any settings. It's already set right where you need it. And this will split the voice recording into loads of tiny files. Again, you can see in the command line it's working. It's at, I mean, it's working really hard. This only takes a minute or so. And when that's done, on to step three. This is the big part. Now, before we click that big, tempting one-click training button, there's just one thing we need to change. We want more training epochs than 20. 20 will sound like crap, so a good number is anything between 250 and 300. Basically, the more epochs you use, the better it will sound, but the longer it will take to train. Besides, you don't really need any more than 300. 300 is basically enough to train a voice and make it sound good. You could go higher than that if you want, but bear in mind, obviously, it will take longer. And there won't be much improvement, if any. I mean, I only used 100 training epochs for the synthesized voices, and that worked really well for them. Human voices, though, yeah, you're going to want to go higher. Like I said, 250 to 300 is about where you want to have it. 
we don't need to change anything else. So now it's time to hit that button. Now, this is going to take a while. First, it's going to repeat steps one and two, and then it will start the training. On my system, it can do about 80 epochs an hour. And since I've set this to 300, it's going to take about three hours and 45 minutes. For you, it might take longer or it might be quicker. It really depends on what hardware you have. If you have a really high-end GPU with lots of VRAM, you might want to use the cache option. But for us with six gigabytes of VRAM or less, it's just not an option. While it's doing the training, I should point out that this is going to take a huge amount of hard drive space. It's about 150 gigabytes of temporary files per voice, but that can be deleted afterwards when we've saved the PTH and index files, which only take about 150 megabytes at the most. So while this is running, I just want to point out one very important thing. Do not close this command prompt. Because this is what's actually running the program. This is what's actually doing the work. Well, this and the GPU, of course. Speaking of which, let's just see how hot my GPU is getting. And yet, yeah, I'm recording the screen this way because, um, as the computer's working so hard, I don't want both my GPU and my CPU to overheat, so... Doing it with the camera this time. Let's just see how hot my GPU is getting. Oh, it's only at, um, about 70-something. Mind you, the room is cooler this time. And I've, got a, and I've got a dirty great fan pointed at the computer, so, yeah. This is going to take a while, so I'll be back when it's done. So, about 3 hours and 45 minutes later, we have a voice model. Now, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit concerned about my graphics card because it did reach about 84 degrees Celsius. So I put a big fan next to my computer to try to cool it down. Anyway, we have a voice model, and in this case, it's the Tails and Sonic Pals Tails voice. But we need to put this into the voice changer software. So, first off, in the RVC beta folder, I'm going to go to weights, and you can see the voice model in there. So we'll copy that with Control c and then go to the RVC GUI folder, into Models, and as you can see, this comes with a few demo voices, but we're not going to be using them. We want to use the voice we just created. So in here, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it Tails and Sonic Pals Tails. And I'm going to paste the voice model in there. But we're not done yet. We still need the index files. This can be a little tricky to find, but I'll show you where they are. It's kind of where you'd least expect it. So if we go into our RVC beta folder, and then into logs, you can see a folder named TASP. Remember, that's what I named the voice, so that's why it's called that. And in here should be one or two index files. You can see one here. and one at the bottom here. You usually only need one of the index files since both of them seem to work the same, even though one of them is bigger, but for safety, I'm going to copy both and I'm going to paste them into the folder where I put the voice PTH file. In fact, it's the logs that take up so much space, but we can delete this when we're done because we won't be needing it anymore and we'll still have the voice we made. So now it's finally time to try this voice out. So I have something I recorded. Hi, I'm Tails and Clem is my bestest friend, even more than Sonic. I can say bestest because I'm only eight years old. Everybody keeps saying I'm adorable, but I am not adorable. I'm just, oh, what the heck, I'm adorable. Actually, aren't I the most adorable thing you've ever seen? Don't you want to hug me? Go on, you know you want to. Hey Sonic, want a free hug? They're free. I know, it's 100% cringe, you don't need to tell me that. And I'm going to change this into Tails' voice. So, I'll load up the voice changer. 
Again, this takes an eternity to load. And here we are. It's a little bit off screen, so I'll just move it up a bit. I'll load in the cringy voice clip. And this should be able to see the folder with the voice I made. There it is. Tales and Sonic Pals Tales. So, next thing, I'm gonna set the frequency zero method. Dio and PM are kind of crap. Harvest works a lot better, but it makes the S's kind of buzzy sometimes. Crap doesn't have so much of a buzzy S problem, but you get some weird artifacts in the background. Usually I do two conversions, one with the harvest and one with the crep, and then pick the best from both of them and edit it all together, but for now we'll use harvest. Also, I've just noticed that this hasn't loaded in the index files, probably because they're both in the same folder. It should only have one index file in there, so if I remove one it should automatically load that in, but for now I'll just click one of the index files, I'll press Ctrl+C c to copy it, then paste that into this little box where it says index file. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm going to set the pitch to about 6 because this voice is quite a bit higher than mine. It's going to sound a bit weird at my own pitch. So, press the convert button and let's see what we get. Hi, I'm Tails. And Clem is my bestest friend. Even more than Sonic. I can say bestest because I'm only eight years old. Everybody keeps saying I'm adorable, but I am not adorable. I'm just... Oh, what the heck, I'm adorable. Actually, aren't I the most adorable thing you've ever seen? Don't you want to hug me? Go on. You know you want to. Hey, Sonic. Want a free hug? They're free. <laughs> there we go. Not bad. Anyway, yeah, that's how you do it. So now you know. Anyway, that's just about all I have for you today. But before I go, I just want to make it perfectly clear that I am not holding myself responsible for this. Can you see the sun shining? Nope.